Good day, good day, good day everyone and once again we are looking at that November 2022 exam, right? So if you haven't subscribed, just hit that subscribe button and tell everyone that your uncle is trying to do the most in helping you prepare for the exam for those of you who are writing tomorrow and any of you that are going to watch this at any time. Right, let's get right into that question. So they say to us, we've got sketched below uh, the graph of h of x, which is 1 over x plus p uh, plus q. They say the asymptotes h intersect at uh, 1 and 2. Now, please remember, so this is a, a simple case of a hyperbola, right? Now, remember, this value over here, right, which is our p value, shows us the vertical asymptote. So it's talking about this guy here, right? And this value here shows us our horizontal asymptote, which is this guy over here, right? Now, what you must keep in mind is that P will always change in sign, right? Uh, so it means if it's positive one, we must actually write it as a, a negative one there, right? And Q actually just remains as is. So already that tells us that the value of P would be negative 1, and the value of Q would actually be equal to 2, all right? So those are our asymptotes. Now let's have a look at the questions uh, that follow and try to answer them as quickly as we possibly can, right? So they say write down the values of P and Q. Note that they did not say calculate, right? So that means that uh, we could uh, already read them off from the graph. We said that our p-value is minus 1. Remember, we said it changes sign. And our q-value in this case would be equal to positive 2. It retains the sign, right? They say calculate the coordinates of the intercepts of h, right? Now, in this case, we want to know, um, you know, at, at, at the point h. Now, if you remember... They said to us that the, you know, the, the intercept of the, co rather the coordinates of the x-intercept in this case. Um, right. So what do we do when we want to find the x-intercept? So the x-intercept, this is simply where y is equal to zero, isn't it? So we want to know for this graph, right, where is y equal to zero? So 4.1.2, we know we've got y is equal to uh, 1 over x minus 1 plus 2, right? So remember, that's what we had as our graph. So we are now simply going to make y equal to 0. So we're going to say 0 is equal to 1 over x minus 1 plus 2. And if we take the 2 to the other side, we've got negative 2 over 1 over x minus 1. Right, so if you want to, in this case, uh, you can cross multiply. Well, it depends how you want to do this. So I'm going to say negative two x uh, two into x minus one. Okay, if I cross multiply, that will give us one. Okay, so if I divide both sides by negative two, all right, that cancels that. So x minus one will be equal to negative one over two. And so what is our x-intercept? If I take the 1 to the other side, it becomes 1 minus a half, and that should give me 1 over 2, right? I know I worked quickly through that one. Um, you can work it out in whatever way that you uh, uh, like, right? So it means that our x-intercept will be at 1 over 2, right? So that value there will be 1 over 2. Okay, so the value there. Right. Now, uh, they say write down the coordinates of the x-intercept of g if g of x is equal to h of x plus 3. Now, ladies and gents, what they are doing is that they are taking the graph of g, I mean of h of x, and they are shifting it. Note when they put that uh, value there within the bracket, right? And they're saying plus 3. Remember, 
for the x uh, uh, shift or in this case what we call the horizontal shift if the number is positive it means that i'm shifting three units to the left remember i know it's counterintuitive right so it means i am shifting three units to the left right um so by shifting at three units to the left it means I will actually minus three units from whatever value that I want. Okay, our x-intercept was one over two, right? So for 4.1.3, okay, I'm going to say, well, the new x-intercept will be the old and x-intercept, which is one over two, but I'm simply going to subtract three from that and I will get minus 2.5 or you can say uh, minus 2 and 1 over 2 or you can say it's negative 3 over 2 okay right so that will be my new x-intercept all i'm doing okay um i am just shifting anything that i'm asked for by three units right now the next equ uh, the next question they say the equation of an x of an axis of symmetry for h is y is equal to x plus t determine the values of t now please i, I want you to remember that when it comes to the hyperbola right so in this case uh, it has two axes of symmetry right the one axis of symmetry has got a positive uh, gradient okay so what happens there so it, it would tend to have a okay so i'm just going to try and draw that there all right so there it is there right so that would be the axis of symmetry uh, of that graph but another axis of symmetry would be y is equal to minus x plus you know a, a particular value let's just say uh, m right now the axis of symmetry of a hyperbola always pass through the the you know um, the intersection of your asymptotes. Now remember, our asymptotes are at one and two, right? So we've got a point that we can use now to determine you know the rest of what we need, right? So in this case, I'm going to show you. So what we are looking for. Um, is simply right the axis of symmetry where we've got a positive gradient x plus t right so in this case to get the value of t that's 4.1.4 all right let's try and get this thing writing okay so 4.1.4 i am simply going to say right i know i've got y is equal to x plus t but remember, I've got a coordinate, which is 1 and 2. So I can substitute that there, right? So I can say, well, where y is 2, x is 1. And I'm looking for the value of t. So in this case, it means that t, if I take this to the other side, it becomes negative. So t would be equal to 1, right? So it is y is equal to x plus 1. That would be the equation of the axis of symmetry right now if you wanted the other one of course it would be y is equal to minus x plus you know let's just give this uh now let's not use p and q because we already have those right let's say x plus z okay right so and you'd substitute the same coordinates to find the value of z that would be the other uh, but they didn't ask us for that this time around okay so the value of t is equal to 1, okay? Right, and finally, they say determine the values of x, right? For which uh, that is actually uh, negative 2 is actually less than uh, 1 over x plus uh, x minus 1. Now, I want you to quickly note, ladies and gents, does this not look like our uh, graph? The only difference is that they've kind of just rearranged, you know, just rearranged the values. So let me try and write it as it was, right? 
1 over x minus 1, right? I'm going to say plus 2, right? Is greater than, all I simply did was to take the 2 to the other side, okay? So I would have a 0 this side, and I'd have a plus 2 on the other side, right? So should be greater or equal to 0, right? Now, please, I want you to listen carefully, ladies and gents, right? So this means they are asking me, where is this graph of g of x, right? I mean, uh, h of x, rather, greater or equal to 0, right? Now, I want you to think about it. Where is the y value of this graph greater or equal to 0? Now, note, in this case, from this point on here, we want where the graph becomes positive from that point, right? So the x value that is associated with that is 1 over 2. You remember, that's the x-intercept, isn't it? Right? So for any value, please, I want you to listen carefully, right? Okay. So in this case, for any value from negative infinity, right? Do you agree with me? From negative infinity, our y value is positive, right? All the way up until we get to this value over here, right? I like to use a different color, okay? So in this case, from negative infinity all the way up until we get to this value here, our graph was greater than zero. But now from, um, you know, from one over two, all the way to 1, right, between these two values here, our graph starts becoming uh, negative, right? So look at that. It starts becoming negative there. And then again, for all values of x greater than 1, it starts becoming positive again. So it means where is our graph positive? So x is an element of, now note, it's going to be from negative infinity, all the way to 1 over 2, and we include 1 over 2 because, remember, in that case, it is, they said, greater or equal to 0, right? But also, or uh, it will be between, right, from 1, so from x is equal to 1, we said our graph has a y value that is positive, all the way it becomes positive, so that will be from 1. Oh, actually, from 1, that is excluded because, remember, it doesn't touch that line there all the way up until infinity. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Or if you want to write it in another way, it will be for all values of x, okay, less than 1 over 2, actually less than or equal to 1 over 2, or for all values of x greater than 1. And in this case, we exclude that 1 there. We'll just simply say greater than. Okay, right. I hope you understood that part there, right? So uh, that is where we will leave it. We'll look at the next one in the next video. Shop, shop.